what is up guys today's video is super interesting we are learning about system design but for a metaverse game now system design is a huge topic and it's something that not many people are comfortable with even though so many resources are, are available on the internet and i have created a lot of content on system design but it's just not there on youtube i conduct a lot of sessions with scalar most of you must have seen the ads with scalar as well when i conduct those sessions usually on the weekends like one or two weekends uh, in a month and I also mentor a lot of uh, engineers offline with system design. So, uh, and I plan to create more system design content. Um, but that's system design from a Web2 perspective. Whatever I've been teaching, even in those sessions, is, is system design from a Web2 perspective, right? For that, there's a lot of content available in the sense you have books, you have blogs, you have YouTube videos, and they, they all talk about the same few things, the cap theorem, and then you have, uh, you know, uh, load balancing, you have ca caching and all of those different things. How does it work for a Web3 system? How does it work for a metaverse game? Have you ever thought about it? And uh, this is going to be a problem in the future. And I thought, why not? Uh, why don't I take this initiative to kind of try to educate people on how system design could work for uh, products of the future, products of the future, which include Web3 products like uh, a metaverse game. Now, before we get started, I just want to clear, clarify some things that uh, metaverse is another, it's a huge, huge, um, it's a huge topic. It's, it's a big universe. Okay. We'll be taking a very small slice of it. Like basically, we're just talking about games on the blockchain. That is it. I'm not considering AR, VR, all of that stuff. I'm not considering in-game complete economies and marketplaces, all, nothing like that I'm considering. Just considering a very simple thing that how could games work on the blockchain? How could they use blockchain to uh, enhance the gaming experience? Okay. And that's all that I'll be covering. Uh, this is a small video. I'm not going to deep into too much depth because I don't know how this video is going to do. I don't know how much people are interested in learning about Web3, especially from a system design perspective, right? Um, so this is, think of it as a pilot video. If this does well, I'll be creating a lot more system design videos for Web3 products like cryptocurrency exchanges, uh, decentralized exchanges, crypto bots, and many more, all right? And NFT platforms, obviously. All right, guys, before we go any further, I want to first talk about the seven layers of the metaverse. Now, there's the infra layer, then there's the human interface layer. Then there's the decentralization layer, which is the, the most important layer for us, the decentralization layer, which is the blockchain. Then the second most important layer for us is this, the experience layer, which is where the games are being played, right? The experience of the gamer or the user. So uh, in this video, for the purpose of this video, I'm just talking about the experience layer and the decentralization layer, just these two layers of the metaverse mostly, and a little bit about the human interface layer, that's it. I'm skipping the spatial computing, which is, like I said, VR, AR, XR, skipping that, that. I'm skipping the creator economy, skipping discovery as well. These three layers I'm skipping because these require for you to have a little more knowledge about how Web3 works. And I want to build that knowledge for you, uh, help you build that knowledge in more videos. Like I said, this is more of a pilot video. I want to see how this video does, if people are even interested in this kind of a topic, and then I'll, I want to like, pursue this, all right? So uh, we're doing system design for games and how those games use blockchains to be able to enhance the gamer experience while talking a little bit about the human, human interface side of things. Okay, so seven layers of the metaverse, talking, we're just going to cover these two in detail, mostly, we're just gonna talk about those ones, okay? So metaverse is a huge thing, like I said. Now, there are three questions that come into the mind of any uh, person who's beginning with designing a system for the metaverse or for Web3. They would think, uh, now, th this is specifically for, let's say, specifically for games. These are very relevant questions. If you are designing or developing games on the blockchain, these are very relevant questions. But even for somebody who's just making a normal Web3 application, these might be very relevant questions as well. So you would be thinking, do you have to store everything on the chain? Because a game uh, would create so much of data, right? So much of user data. Do you have to store everything on the chain? Because that's that's the confusion that people have. That, you know, if because I we've heard that blockchains uh, have issues scaling up and you don't want to be storing too much information on them because it's getting very slow and all of that information, all of that stuff, right? Like transactions are getting very slow and expensive, all of those things. So do you want to be storing everything on the chain? Uh, the answer is no. You can have your uh, centralized servers with the game and then you can leverage decentralized servers for things that really matter, for which you really want to leverage the power of blockchains like transparency, for example, or immutability. All right. so. The answer to the first question is no, you don't have to store everything on the chain. Second is, is there is there just one blockchain usually? So 
for this entire product that you're going to be building, like say a complete game, would you just have one blockchain? So the answer to that is also no. You can have multiple private blockchains or public blockchains running for uh, different utilities. So you can store NFT data, sorry, NFT and your assets on one uh, blockchain. I'll show you how the, uh, that works. You can store uh, the in-game information if you want to maintain some checkpoints or in-game progress information of a particular user, you want to maintain that, you can maintain that on a separate blockchain. You can have multiple different blockchains. We'll see why, we'll see why would, you would want to have multiple blockchains in a, bit, in a while when we are designing the system. And then how do you get data from outside? Because in isolation, the blockchain cannot really exist or cannot do much, right? You want to have oracles, which are uh, decentralized software that help you basically get data or pulling data from other blockchains or other centralized sources. Now, block oracles could be centralized or decentralized depending on what kind of oracle do you use. The most famous one out, out in the market right now is Chainlink. I think it's decentralized now. You, you'll have to check that one. Um, so you basically are able to get data from the outside, all right? Uh, these are the three most important questions that might come to your mind when you start designing the system for a metaverse game. Now, let's first talk about what a traditional game engine looks like. And I won't be going into too much depth because uh, information about this you'll find in a lot of books, a lot of blogs and medium, a lot of YouTube videos, you'll easily find information about how a typical gaming engine works, right? Because you know you have rendering abilities in a game, you'll have utilities, you have uh, you know GL, you'll have physics engine, texture control, you'll have audio engines and graphic uh, drivers, audio drivers, all of that. Okay, so I'm just going over them really quickly, but I'll, I'll give you, actually, I'll, I'll share this link with you in this video, uh, in the description of this video. You go through this entire board on uh, this physical board on, on your own, okay? And um, what you'll basically notice is all of these things you probably already know about. If you've played any games, you already know that you have projection and rasterization, you have obviously mass library. Most importantly, you have collision detection and collision boundaries. If you have any, any uh, basic knowledge about gaming, you would know that this is how games work. And then uh, in the most recent games, you also have AI engine for creating characters and for their behaviors. And then you have real time machine learning for adaptive gameplay and based on how the user is playing. Uh, the game needs to become more or less intelligent based on how the user uh, is experiencing the game. Then you have animation modeling. So uh, this is what a typical game engine looks like, right? And this is not what we're interested in, right? You can get information about any of these components that I've just shown you anywhere on the internet, anywhere on the books. What, you, what you're interested in right now, what, you, what you're watching this video for, is how games, while using this game engine, actually interact with the blockchain or store or, or use blockchain to enhance the user experience or the gamer experience and how they can be called as a metaverse game. How could you say that, okay, this game is a metaverse game, right? This is how I'd be doing it. So let's say if a user comes in, Okay, and he authenticates himself. Now, this authentication could be Web3 authentication. So, there are companies now that enable you to um, enable uh, enable you to authenticate users using Web3. So, you could have, uh, let's say, your data existing on, a, on an Ethereum chain or another chain, or you could just be a Web2 user. You could just be a Google and Facebook user. There are companies now that, that create Web3 accounts for you and are create, they create those hashes and addresses for you and are able to uh, onboard you into Web3 very seamlessly uh, into, into uh, Web3 products. Okay, so authentication definitely will work, but it will be Web3 authentication. Then you have authorization, and authorization usually works with the user data in the sense, how much access does this user have? How much has he paid to our platform to play games or what kind of you know access does he have? So you need an authorization uh, layer for it or, or a service for it. And that usually works in tandem with the user data which user has how much authorization. So the user data, uh, which is specific to this platform and the authorization data, you could ideally store on uh, your own blockchain. You could ideally store it on your own blockchain, okay? So uh, now here we are assuming that the game engine, which I just showed you, uh, is being used as a web uh, experience, right? So you're, you're playing the game on the web, you're, you've ex entered the game on the web, and now the game, uh, whichever game you're playing, they want to store your information about your user information and your authorization information. They could ideally use blockchain to store that. Okay. And if you want to also store your game progress data, you could do that on the blockchain. Now, uh, what happens here is 
that you can store this information on a specific chain in the sense the game could have their own chain. So you would see these days that games are launching their own blockchains and that's why they're saying that we are now a uh, coin, not just token, we are coin because we have our own blockchain and they're uh, launching these coins out on the crypto exchanges and they're raising money. Because of this, they want to store a lot of data on, on the blockchain. Uh, blockchains are decentralized, they're a better way of storing data. They have uh, all, they almost provide all three from CAP theorem, consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. They are able to provide a lot of these three things, all, all three of these things in a, in a high, very high percentage. So this is why blockchains are a really good way to store information. They provide a lot of transparency, right? If you want to have, uh, you don't want to lose your game progress data, you want to have it decentralized. Uh, they just basically enhance user experience in terms of that. Okay, now there's, uh, there's more uh, benefits of storing user data on a blockchain, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But for now, what I'm saying here is that you could have your own specific blockchain that the game creates for themselves, or they could use an existing blockchain like XGC or NEO as well. Okay. Now there are pros and cons to both. You can have your own, create your own blockchain from scratch, but that takes a lot of development time, but you can control a lot of things, control a lot of elements. Transition time, the transition time and uh, costs can be brought down to very manageable uh, levels because you will be only using this blockchain for your own company's data. Uh, for your own purposes. Whereas something like an XTC or NEO, even though they're fast right now, when they scale up slowly, they might get slow. That's what I think at least. They're supposed to be really fast blockchains, XTC and NEO, but they might get slow. And they're, they're kind of general purpose blockchains. They're not just storing information that, you know, specific, that's specific to this kind of game. So there, there are pros and cons for both. Uh, and, and the pros for XTC and NEO is that you can, they're fast right now, and then you can get started very fast and you get get a lot of uh, things out of the box. You don't have to build anything on your own. Um, so now that we have stored some information on, on our blockchain, uh, now mind you, this is not a private blockchain. This is a permissionless public blockchain, and, but the blockchain could have been developed by us or we could be using XTC or NEO, okay? Now the other thing is you could buy, you could use crypto and fiat currencies to purchase in-game currency, which is, I've called it game coin here, but you could call it any coin, any, anything here, any currency name. You can use that, you can use crypto and fiat to buy game coin, and you can then buy NFTs. NFTs are basically, uh, in your game, you'd want to have swords, cloaks, and mods, any mods that you have on your character, you would want to have them as game assets, game assets that are basically NFTs. Why NFTs? NFTs basically uh, are non-fungible tokens. They are they basically um, give you a guarantee of uniqueness that this is completely unique to you, and then you purchase it. And this is why NFTs are becoming very popular with games. And this is why you want to store this information also on a blockchain. On uh, so I have kept this on a separate blockchain than this. Okay, NFTs. Now the benefit of uh, having NFTs, buying these as, as NFTs, is that eventually games want to have inter-chain operability, interoperability between different chains, different blockchains. So whatever swords, cloaks, mods that you have on your avatar here in this one game on running on this blockchain, let's say a new blockchain, you can take all of those assets and move to a different game. So in Web2, what used to happen was you have you have used to have your, uh, you know, your guns and your swords and cloaks and all of that in one game. And then you had to completely buy all of that from scratch from on another game. But if those games are now interoperable, so if this game is on running on NEO, this game is running on XTC, but they have built a bridge. So these are called as uh, cross-chain bridges. So if they built, they've built a bridge to have interoperability, then you don't have a problem. You can, you can carry around all of these avatars and all of the assets that you purchased here, here to this place. And you can play a much richer gaming experience. So this is why the gamer's experience is enhanced with the use of blockchain, right? And there's obviously, because of blockchain, there's decentralization, your data never uh, is lost. And you have transparency, you can show that, you know, who purchased this kind of NFTs. And obviously NFTs are non-fungible because uh, that's how they're built. You know, that's the inherent characteristic of an NFT. They're all uh, <clears throat> non-fungible. So you can uniquely identify that, okay, this person does have these assets that he's using in this game. And games, uh, no, no, all of this, uh, all of this technology, right? This whole deep tech, which is blockchains and games and NFTs, they, they, you, you might think that they're just being used for games right now, and it's very, very trivial. But trust me, the it's it's going to get more and more serious now, and games are going to get more and more important as we go uh, into the future, and more and more economies are going to be uh, created, and uh, be, uh, they will take place on 
on the game on in the games on the blockchain so they're calling it as uh, living on the game or living on the chain right or living on the game on the chain which is all of us eventually now that we just live on the internet mostly right living online eventually we'll be living on chain very soon that's happening with ethereum and uh, xdc and neo and all these companies are coming up and creating these web3 products slowly we'll move to on game and those games will be built on top of these chains okay all right so uh, now it's also very now we've, we've been talking about gamer experience a lot but it's also very good business model for the gaming companies and such because these nfts um, they, you can restrict buying these nfts based on your own games coin so you launch your own ico you say that only using this coin can you buy my nfts which obviously you take it around uh, it's interoperable take around these nfts to other games but these specific nfts you can buy only using my coin so your coins value goes up okay so it's a very good business model for gaming companies as well so everybody is making money out here um now you you might have noticed that i'm not just teaching you about system design i'm also teaching you more about how web3 itself works and this is why this session is very low and very light on system design concepts it's very high on web3 concepts because the more you understand the web3 concepts uh, the the better your understanding will be of system design which i will actually start raising the complexity in the upcoming videos this video was to just to build your knowledge on web3 uh, technologies and how the systems work in web3 okay all right so what i've mentioned here is that you have separate blockchains for separate utilities and that basically makes your blockchains scalable faster and so on okay and this is like the philosophy of segbit separation i recommend you check this out segregated witness this is what they did with bitcoin to um, make it a little more scalable so that all the information related to the transactions was also being packaged with the transactions so that was making bitcoin really slow as a blockchain so they segregated the witness segregated the uh, the metadata and all of that information so that the blockchain could operate much faster so it's a similar philosophy so just extrapolating it you could say that you can have separate information and separate blockchains and then uh, what i've also mentioned here is that i uh, your gaming systems your blockchains or your systems basically can't exist in isolation they need to be talking or communicating with outside external systems as well for them to be able to do that for them to be able to import real world data from other blockchains or from other sources you need specialized technologies and they're called as oracles they can be centralized decentralized uh, like i said chain link is a very popular one out there in the market and so you use, use these oracles which i have uh, shown you using this diagram and uh, the kind of information that you get is the users interoperable assets in the sense any nfts that or any other uh, data that he has on another game and he wants to import that information here he can do that using oracles if he has uh, and also just generally the information on other how other cryptocurrencies are performing uh, in terms of exchange rates you want to pull that information as well into uh, your system to do all of that you need you need oracles okay so this is your entire system design i know it's quite simple it's quite straightforward but then it's a web3 system design and we're just barely even scratching the surface right so as we look at more and more complicated systems we'll uh, uncover more and more information about how web3 systems work and i'll share more and more uh, complex architectures for you, with you all right uh, because let me show you what a usual web2 architecture looks like uh, once you know we go into all the complexity once we go into all the complexity this is what it looks like let me um, let me go back to my boards and um, let's look at something like this okay so this is a session i did with scalar uh, some time back and this is the kind of complexity um, that you get in a final system design imagine this is a web 2 system right so web 3 systems are obviously a little more complex than this but to be able to get to such complex system designs we need to understand uh, all the basics and this is what we're getting at eventually but now uh, what i want to share with you is just uh, this much information and i hope um, you were able to follow along if you had any questions put them in the comments below 
If you like this content, put it in the comments below. If you want to see more of this kind of content, put it in the comments below. Share it with your friends so that they can also learn from this. Uh, like this video, obviously, and do subscribe if you haven't subscribed because you get such awesome content which you probably won't find anywhere on the internet. I mean, even if you search for text, uh, like Medium articles, you won't find system design for Web3. I can assure you that. Okay, so um, see you in the next video. And I hope um, to hear from you that you liked it so that I can make more such videos where we can go deeper into this rabbit hole. All right.